a huge amount of data is being generated in cities through sensors, connected devices and technology systems that track our energy use, journeys on public transport, spending patterns, parking activity, the brightness of street lighting, the phasing of traffic signals, the use of public services such as libraries and hospitals, and even down to the watering of plants in public parks. Well, the data produced by the Internet of Things can make our lives safer, less wasteful, more sustainable and more convenient. But how exactly? Well, to discuss this, we're joined in the studio by two people from Hitachi Insight Group, the IoT division of Hitachi, Patrick Sherstead and Hans Lindemann. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Patrick and Hans, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the possibilities of using all this data are huge, aren't they? And you've created a special division, Hitachi Insight Group, just to deal with it. What do you see as the possibilities? Yes, we have created the Insight Group. Uh, actually, Hitachi's been in the IoT business for many years, um, but we have created the Insight Group to accelerate uh, our go-to-market activities. When it comes to cities and urban environments, uh, data is crucial um, to make the city more intelligent or smart. IoT and sensors is actually enabling that. It's collecting all the data for different activities in the city. So therefore, it is extremely important for us to be close to that in order to, to work in urban environments. And Hans, how can combining seemingly unrelated data sets, maybe people's energy use with their parking habits, how can that create better services? Well, that's exactly the point, Sarah. So today, in the, in, in the past, you would only have maybe one data set that you could actually look at and, and analyze. Today, we're able to take a very wide variety of public and private data sets and put analytics on top of them. And what that gives you is the ability to draw insight from all that data and then take actions on it. And that's what's critical. And can you provide some examples of how you're actually helping real people and real businesses? Yeah, so I think a, a very good example is the City Data Exchange, which we've just launched in Copenhagen together with the city. And this is a data marketplace which actually allows a consumer or a company which builds applications to access both public, open data, as well as private data. And again, we come back to this point that you can then analyze very disparate data sets in a completely different way than you did in the past. And Patrick, is there a risk that cities that don't invest in this get left behind? And in what way? Well, I think for a city um, in the future, in, in increased urbanization, it, it needs to be attracted for its citizens, both you know, private and the businesses there. So I think you, know, you don't want to be left behind here because if you want the best talent, the best businesses, they will have requirements. So I think you need to keep up with that in order to be a, attractive as a city. It also has a cost perspective that you know you need to use your funds in the best most efficient way and IoT will help you to actually manage the city better because you will have more information to work on. That's it now that's it's a big job isn't it there are lots of possibilities but how do you prioritize what the best technologies and solutions are to work on? The, the best way of actually doing that is to understand what the challenge is or what the pain point is so the way that we always start is to take a market and approach for a city, that means understanding what are the, the city's biggest challenges. Once we understand that, together with the client, the city, then we can apply our technology and our analytics to help them. And what is the best way of paying for all of this when public funding is so tight at the moment? Yes, it is tight. And, and I think uh, what we see uh, is more and more public-private partnerships where industry and the public sector comes together to solve you know, big problems that you, you will have with increased urbanization. We have an example in, in the UK where um, Hitachi is providing trains, intercity express trains. This is a huge investment and the way uh, this is organized is that we're selling the, the trains as a service. So we take responsibility for operating the trains, uh, maintaining the trains and the UK you know, government is paying for the consumption, uh, the usage of the trains. Now you have said that the world doesn't need another IoT platform, there are hundreds already and there you are, you've created one. Why? Yes, well, I mean, the, the Lumada platform is not really a platform in the true sense of the word. It's really an architecture which allows you to combine different types of solutions and applications in an open environment. And that's really the key here. Best of breed solutions that can be put together in order to really allow you to do something more than you did in the past. That is really what the Lumada platform and architecture is all about. And is that proving popular at the moment? Absolutely. We've seen since the launch, uh, which happened a couple of months ago, that a lot of, of companies and cities are very interested in what this enables them to do and the type of insight it provides them. 
Well, Patrick and Hans, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in cyber security and global food security. Bye-bye for now.